Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer in the Parish of Rayleigh. It is Monday the 1st of July and welcome to a new month. Also welcome uh, to today which is the day when the church celebrates and there's a maths joke coming here I'll warn you. Henry John and Henry Venn the Younger, priests, evangelical divines from 1797, 1813 and 1873. Um, Clearly, three men that sit at the intersection uh, of their categories. Math joke, as I said. So let's begin with the words from the Church of England Daily Prayer app. Uh, and you can find it uh, if you look online as well. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever, as your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Uh, so uh, the Psalms, uh, we move to uh, God's Word and uh, the first Psalm today is Psalm 98 and I think that it starts with a very um, sort of happy opening verse. So I think uh, on the first day of a new month, uh, I think it's appropriate. Uh, let's read Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his deliverance he has openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the voice of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sound praises before the Lord, the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. And carrying on, let's read Psalm 99 as well. The Lord is our King, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. Let them praise your holy name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty King who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name, they called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of, cl of, out of, the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the law that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him on his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Um, so as well as Psalms 98 and 99, which I've just looked at there, uh, you can also look at Psalm 101 for today. Uh, and that begins, I will sing of faithfulness and justice to you, O Lord, I will sing. Let me be wise in the way that is perfect. When will you come to me? Uh, so that's Psalm 101, if you want to pause uh, and take some time there. Oh, fantastic. Um, the Old Testament reading today um, is uh, on a new month. I think it's always nice when these things coincide. Um, we're starting the book of Samuel for the New Testament, uh, for the Old Testament reading. 
Uh, so let's uh, let's do that. Let's let's look at the first twenty verses of the first book of Samuel. So this is one Samuel chapter one, reading verses one to twenty. There was a certain man of Ra Ramathaim, a Zuphite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuph, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penin Peninah, or Peninah. Peninah had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his town to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife Penina and all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely, to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year after year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if you will only look on the misery of your servant and remember me, and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her, her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favour in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drunk with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time Hannah conceived, and she bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. And then the gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, reading verses 28 to 40. This is Luke, chapter 19, 28 to 40. As he said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you're untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they, on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones were shouted out. 
sorry for spending so much time reading so much of the Bible this morning. I just felt that um, uh, on, a, on a beautiful day, it's, it, it is literally Monday morning, apologies, this is going to be very late. Um, uh, on a new blue sky day, uh, starting a new book and then um, following on from yesterday's sermon at Holy Trinity where uh, Glenn was talking about boasting and in particular um, how it's right to boast in the Lord. Um, I just felt they were actually all readings that uh, talk of God's power and his plan, um, whether it's about uh, God knowing when he will give Hannah a child and then that child becomes Samuel, uh, who uh, is the priest that anoints David uh, as the future king uh, of Israel. Uh, and then Jesus knowing this small piece of the plan that there's a donkey uh, ready there for him to ride into Jerusalem on what we now know as Palm Sunday. Um, so I just think those are three readings that are, or, or three sets of readings that are worth boasting in today. So let, let's move on to our prayers for today. And as ever, as we, uh, on a Monday, uh, we think about our week and, and the world. So let's pray for our day. Let's pray for all the things we are going to do today. Uh, let's pray for, let's be thankful for our weekend. Uh, we had a, a very nice weekend, spending time yesterday afternoon with, uh, with our family. Uh, and um, a, a, a nice morning at church as well uh, on Sunday. Um, so we thank you for the joy of the weekend and the relaxation over the weekend. We thank you for the opportunity to uh, be salt and light in our communities as we uh, go to work or study or care um, or as we learn and, and, and rest today, all of those different things we do, whether we serve um, or whether we are served. Uh, we pray that you will be with us in our day. We pray for our world and its many, many needs, in particular the need for justice and for peace and for truth and for honesty. Um, there's so many political events going on at the moment, elections literally all over the world. Uh, obviously, it's the general election in this country on Thursday. We pray that uh, that our leaders will seek to serve us in a spirit of truth and justice. Uh, we pray for our brothers and sisters in France as they face uh, what could be a challenging election. Uh, and obviously, so many other countries where uh, people are voting and have that right. We also pray for the countries where those rights are abused or not so freely available. So we pray that uh, individuals' voices may be heard all over the world and that their needs may be met. We also pray for our church, uh, whether it's in Rayleigh or more widely, we pray that that church can be a beacon of peace and hope and love um, to their communities. And we thank you for the opportunity that we do have to serve um, both locally and more widely. And then on a Monday, we think about the world of work. <clears throat> we pray for people working in media and arts, that they may have <clears throat> the vision and clarity uh, to reflect the world as they see it and reflect in us or reflect to us, sorry, the... Um, uh, the needs of that world help uh, that truth uh, and justice that we talked about to come through as a result of uh, people working in those creative and communications industries. We thank you for our farmers and fishermen who provide literally all the food we eat. We thank you for everyone involved in those supply chains that bring our food to us whether it's transporting raw materials, processing, distributing, selling, delivering. We thank you for those people. We thank you for those who work in industries of all kinds. I'm about to set off onto the train to go to work in the bank that I work at. We thank you that uh, 
industry is able to thrive as a result of uh, the, the creativity and the um, risk taking that, uh, uh, that investors are willing to take. We thank you for the opportunity we have uh, to work um, in businesses of all kinds and we pray again that our work in those businesses can reflect your love, your grace, your truth, your justice um, to our working communities, our customers, uh, our management. We pray that we can be, uh, and we're grateful that we can be, uh, bearers of your love and your message uh, in our workplace. We pray for those who find their work challenging or unfulfilling, stressful or perhaps dangerous. Lord, give those that are working in difficult circumstances the protection, the care, the hope, the vision, the clarity that they need in order to stay safe, to remain fulfilled, to be calm in the face of their challenges. We pray that the people around them will help them and support them in that, in that goal. And we pray for sympathy and care and love and grace to be shown to anyone who is having a really challenging day or period of time at work. Finally, we pray for those who are unemployed, uh, whether it's by choice um, or no choice, we pray that these people will find an opportunity to contribute at some point in some way in the future, we pray for those who are una unable to work through poor health or injury, we pray for recovery uh, or relaxation and uh, respite from symptoms. For those that are looking for work, we pray that they will be able to uh, close their search soon uh, and start in, uh, in a new role. For those that are unemployed for other reasons, we pray that they will also be able to contributes to society and be able to and if needed be cared for so we sum summarize this prayer these prayers and we say lord in your mercy hear our prayer and as our savior taught us so we pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Sorry, I think that might be the Red Arrows leaving Southend Airport. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, I should have apologised at the start of this morning prayer. Um, I am recording this at about uh, 20 past eight uh, on Monday morning. Uh, as I said, I had a busy day yesterday at church um, with family coming round um, and I forgot. So I'm going to get this uh, uploaded as quickly as I can, hopefully edited on the train and then uploaded fairly soon after. Uh, so apologies for that uh, and or apologies for late arrival, but I wish you all a great week. Uh, go with God uh, and be salt and light in your communities. Thanks very much and see you next time. Bye.